Welcome back, and you are watching the Short Vol Show on YouTube. My name is David. It is the weekend edition, and I wanted to get into a couple things right away. First of all, let's talk about what a great move down we've had. <clears throat> Last couple weeks has been a beautiful time to be short volatility. Now, that has come along with a bunch of people warning that, like, you know, we're going to spike and, and whatnot, and all the usual pressures that you are confronted with when you have a, a when you have a risky position on um, and you know a lot of people talking about the upside as we move down and I think that's prudent to look at the uh, risk you have on now the beauty of trading options is that we can quantify our risk and we can uh, eliminate specific risks very easily with options. So don't get caught with your pants down. Don't get caught on a spike losing all your money, especially if you're trading options because there's no excuse for this. What am I talking about? Well, what you should be doing is you should be analyzing your risk for a move of 100% up. Right now, you should be saying, how will I fare for a 100% up move? Because the lower, the closer we get to like a 10 in the VIX, a 9 in the VIX, the more of an opportunity we have for those big moves, like the 100% the move. Now, still, right now, there is a lot of room in the term structure for that, um, for a sort of a, a shock absorber type thing. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, the uh, second month's future is now 16, 16 with the VIX handle of 12, right? So the VIX can go up to 16 and uh, it's still below the future. So there is uh, some room here for um, a spike where UVXY is gonna underperform. Um, so there's still a lot of room in the term structure uh, to protect you to some extent to the upside. So. Um, I know a lot of stuff has been coming out over the last couple of days about how there's all this short interest and all these pros are short, uh, you know, volatility products and everything's coiled up like a spring. It's not really as coiled up like a spring as some people would like you to believe. That being said, we can quantify our risk and we can protect ourselves against a big move. So why don't you, right now, I'm going to do it here and... Um, and show you how I would look at it here on Thinkorswim for a 100% move. And we're going to see what our risk is specifically on this position. And you can do the same thing at home. So what am I doing here? Okay, well, I have Thinkorswim open. I go to the Analyze tab. And I'm going down here to Price Slices. I'm going to blow this up so you can see it real well. And I am going to go, and I'm going to look, and I'm going to... This top price slice here, I'm going to change that from up 10% to up 100%. And I'm going to see what that says. Now, if we move over to the right here, we can see what does that do to our P&L. And you can see here, and that I didn't do it right. It only went up 16%. Let me try to do this one more time here. 100%. There we go. And I can see up 100%. The account is going to lose $4,000. Bummer, right? Yeah, that would be a real bummer. However, there is um, almost $8,000 in the account. So, uh, you know, we'd be losing a little bit over 50% of the account. Real big bummer. Is it something you can live with? That's going to be determined by you. Now, I would speculate that there are some people out here, though, that either are, are just naked short calls or something else where they would lose the entire value of their account. And, you know, one other way you can figure that out, and we've gone through this before, is if we go to the far right of this page and we click under BP Effect, there is a section here that says PNR. And if we, um, if there is any risk of losing our entire account, it's going to tell you what percentage move 
uh, you would need to lose your entire account. So let's just set up a scenario here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add selling 10 naked calls to my account. Or let's sell five. Let's say we sell five of the eight Nove uh, 20 calls. Two, three, four, five. We can look down here. And we've added five. Let's just put them all in one spot so it's not so stretched out here. All right, now, if we were to look at these numbers here, what would we see? Well, if we, if we were in short five naked calls, um, if we clicked on this, look, up 62%, your account is losing all its money. You don't want to be in a position like that because this could pop 62%. Is, is it... Real likely? No, but it certainly could do that. Now, this is showing if my account, if I had sold five additional naked calls, it would show me up 100% losing 12000 on the day, and thus my account would be negative $4,000. Do I want to have that risk on? Certainly not. But there are other ways to protect ourselves besides uh, covering these calls. Now, these calls are not very fat, so I would suggest in this situation not to be short this kind of risk. But let's say, for example, that you had sold uh, the 18 calls in instead, a little bit fatter call, still in the getting 44 cents for them. So a silly thing to do. But let's say for, for whatever reason you were short these calls, and you, what you can do is you can protect yourself by buying some sort of out-of-the-money call against them. So, let's see. Let's move our display back down to a reasonable size here. You can do a couple things to protect yourself. Uh, one thing you can do is you could buy out-of-the-money calls that are at the extreme level to protect yourself against a spike. What we call that in the market maker world is buying your wings. As I attempt failingly to fix this, fit to screen. There we go. Um, so if we were to go in here, we could purchase, say, the... front week, we could buy like the Nov. Well, what is up 100%? Well, with this 18, up 100% is twice that, right? So around 36. So buying the 36 calls would not help us because it's our, you know, you, you've already lost all that money up there. But look, 26 calls. Now these are wide markets because we are, uh, you know, the, the markets are closed right now. But look, 25 calls. You could buy the 25 calls. You could buy uh, five of these for $0.08. Cents. All right, five times eight. So that's $40 investment. One, two, three, four, five. And let's see how that changes our risk profile here. So I'm going to go analyze trade. And... All right, so if we bought these five calls, all of a sudden our risk goes from having lost 12,000 to having lost only 7,000. So your risk is cut in half for a 100% up move, and you're back to the point where you would have almost lost your whole account, but not quite. Now, some people feel comfortable with that level of risk. Other people don't. In this particular case where, where the situation is such that, and let me just pull this up so we can see this. In this particular case, you can see the two trades that I've added here, uh, which was selling these naked calls, the 18 calls at 44 cents, and buying these for 8 cents. In this particular case, instead of uh, buying wings against these 18 calls, I just think the whole thing looks ridiculous. For only 44 cents, you're putting all this risk on. Instead of buying these wings against these calls, I would say just cover some of the calls, right? So if you lower your risk down to only selling three of these naked calls, right? Now your risk is down to uh, a little bit over losing the account once again, which isn't good. The reason for all this is that I have this whole other position on, but let's take the whole, let's pretend that our only position now was short three naked calls, okay? All right, so 
If you're just your whole position short three naked calls, 100% up move, you lose 5,000 out of the seven out of the 8,000 in your account, and that might seem more reasonable to you. Uh, let's discuss the risk that this position has on without adding any of these things in it right now. What position this account has and where our risk lies. Okay, so this position essentially now is a, and try to follow along with me here, this position, how can I make this smaller so we can see it better? Essentially, we have these condors on, and that started with buying this uh, December, we're along the December 22, 19 put spread. So we're buying a put spread. It's like, it could be worth $3. We're paying two and change for it. So the most we can lose on this is the two and change we paid for it. However, that's $200 each time we bought it. And we have 30 of these on. So that's a decent amount of money locked right in there. So if this were to close on expiration in 48 days above 23, then we would lose a significant amount of money. However, the amount of money is capped at the amount that we pay for this put spread. We, we're not short anything naked here. So uh, the amount of money we could lose is capped, which is, I believe, an important thing in trading the VIX uh, products at all times. And especially once we get in a lower and lower range on the VIX, you want to know what the limited amount of, what the limit is to the amount of money you could lose. Now, uh, in this case, all right, so we've got 200 and something dollars each invested in these put spreads and we've sold some out of the money put spreads against that so this is going these put spreads we sold against it for 60 cents that's going to add an extra 60 cents times 30 to that pile of cash we have to protect ourselves so another way of looking at that is you could say okay if it ends above 23 the two dollars that we bought for, that we pay for these put spreads subtract 60 cents so our risk is like 130 uh, I'm sorry, 170 times the 30 uh, for this trade. So, uh, you know, $5,000, let's say. Um, but let's be aware. Okay, so if this spikes, we can lose $5,000, which is the most of the account. However, the good news, the important thing about this position and the saving grace for this position is there are still 48 days till expiration. So the thing does spike, we have time. If we were to get a mini spike, the play would probably be to buy in these put spreads that were short, the 15, 12, or just leave them because they're unlikely to, uh, they're less and less likely to end up in the money. But you know, the other risk, of course, with this position which you might not think about all that much, but you need to, is that we do actually move lower below this 15 strike because we are short this $3 put spread here between 15 and 12. Now we've only collected 60 cents for that put spread. However, it's pretty unlikely that this can get to 12 in 48 days. In fact, it's darn near impossible, but that risk still is out there because darn near impossible does not mean that it can't happen. So when you're selling you know, trying to create an extra few bucks by selling like downside against against uh, this short you have on, be aware that you don't want to give it away too cheaply because the worst thing that could happen, you know, the, the biggest bummer psychologically would be to be that you're right in volatility, shorting volatility, but it just goes too far down and you end up losing money even being right. That would be a real bummer. Um, all right, so one... The biggest takeaway I want you to take away from this, though, is you need to know what your risk is in a spike. You need to have thought about it ahead of time. What would you do if, what would you do if on Monday UVXY is trading thirty dollars? What would you do if on Monday UVXY is trading sixteen dollars? What would you do if on Monday UVXY is trading twenty dollars? And these should be things that you've already thought of ahead of time. That's stuff to think about over the weekend, maybe. All right, now I wanted to highlight, this is a very simple thing that uh, TD Ameritrade has done, but I think it's really cool. So I wanted to highlight this. This just came out this week. So if you actually go to the uh, TD Ameritrade website, um, really cool 
they have this new thing and it's going to show you a graph, a chart of your PNL um, over time. And uh, and we'll pull it up right now. Um, but very cool thing to do is to show uh, to show your PNL over time because you can track your daily movements. And I've wanted them to do this for a while because, of course, you could you could every day write down what your PNL was and make your own chart of it. But when they have it there for you already, that seems even cooler to me. Let me see if I can find where this is. Right, so right at the beginning, right on the first page, uh, you see this thing, it says, let me get out of the way here again, it says balance history, right here. Balance history, see where my pointer is? Click on that, and it's actually showing it right now. It's just gonna show a chart of your balance history over time, which is very, very cool. Like th th this year, what, what did your balance do? Um, now, be keep in mind that if somebody comes to you and says like, here, hire me, look, my balance went up over time, you might wanna say to them, okay, but did you make any deposits or withdrawals from your account? Because it doesn't show deposits or withdrawals from your account here. So you could fool somebody if you just put like, a thousand bucks in your account slowly over time every month or something then it would show you like oh i made a thousand bucks every month uh and it doesn't it doesn't uh distinguish between money that you actually made trading or uh money that you deposit in your account however very cool thing uh now this not only does it show on a chart your uh your pnl but you can set a custom date range and you can export the numbers to a spreadsheet, which um, is very cool as well. And if uh, maybe you're like me and you have several accounts, but either way, you can chart your progress, which I think, f you know, having feedback on your progress and responding to that is a very important thing. Um, I am of the uh, opinion that. I don't want to set goals for P&L for myself ahead of time because I just don't know how there's any way of having a steady P&L in this life. It's just never worked that way for me. Uh, what I do is I put a position on, I manage my risk as best I can, and what's left over is a P&L. Um, I can't set goals for myself because I don't know what opportunity is going to present itself. Um, you know, you can trade well. You could go through a month and say, look, I traded great. And thus, I didn't lose any money in this awful market. Or you could make ten thousand dollars in a day and be like, "Oh, I really screwed that up. That was a chance to make a hundred grand, and I just, I really left a ton of money on the table by trading badly." And it, it, it all just comes down to what opportunity is out there and how you're able to capitalize or not capitalize on it. So, um, so I don't, I'm not someone that likes to set goals for myself. Um, I've never had a P&L that's gone smoothly. It's always been like one month makes the year or, or um, well, it just varies. It's, it, you know, the volatility of P&L has been wild. Um, and um, that's just the way it's been for me. I wish it was, sometimes I wish it was smoother than that, but um, it just isn't in my case. All right, so there you go. Um, there is increasingly people are worried about a spike coming up just because we've been moving lower for a while now. If we look at the chart of the VIX, um, there still is a lot of room in this term structure, though, for us to move lower. Um, however, uh, I'm not telling you what to do. You're going to have to pay, figure that out for yourself. Um, here's the VIX. The VIX has moved lower and lower and lower. If we look at UVXY similar situation um but we will get a pop at some point if i back the vix out to a year you're gonna see pop 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 there's pops all over the place it's gonna happen again soon you can see this period here from april to august was basically pretty much a move down with not that many big pops now this could be like that look at this move here from 
beginning of 2019 all the way. It's like six months of basically down. So we can't predict when the pop is going to be. We do know it will happen at some point, however. Um, and this being said, I want to thank the new Patreon people. I have gotten some new renewed interest with, from Patreon for people. I do appreciate that. I don't talk about it that much, but it is expensive to... Uh, to make videos, especially when I get out from uh, behind the desk here. And I haven't been able to do that because of uh, other things pulling at me lately, but I'm planning on an increased effort and increased, um, I know you guys like interviews, some more interviews coming up with uh, important people. Um, I've gotten away from the interviews a little bit because people seem to enjoy more just uh, videos about how to, about the nuts and bolts of trading and how to make money. Um, but I do want to get back. I want to also revisit some of the people that we've interviewed in the past and have them uh, come back on to give us a little update. That would be very interesting and whatnot. But we're going to have plenty of time for that stuff as the winter comes upon us. Uh, let's talk about a couple stocks really quickly. Carvana. Unbelievable. Just a, I just, I, I'm just always boggled. My mind is boggled by how this thing continues to just reinvent itself and make new highs. I mean, it looked like, you know, we got up to like 80 level here a couple months ago and it looked like this thing was rolling over and finally was going to be, uh, have a more reasonable valuation. And it just, I'm sure that people just got hosed here at the 65 level when it turned around and went back up. That has got to have been brutal for some people who were, because I know that people, you know, there was definite, people trying to short it up here and this turnaround has got to have been brutal for people. I'm not trading this one because it's just a monster and I'm staying away from it. Uh, similar to Tesla. Uh, anybody following the market has seen Tesla. We, I knew it was a monster from way back when, but it has reproven itself as a monster. Let's go back three years and just take a look at it stayed in this range for a while and then you saw the breakdown and it looked like, you know, it, oh, it's curtains. Uh, now, for some reason, Tesla, people bring in this partisan politics thing that we try to avoid so much on this channel. It gets brought in on Tesla a lot. And one person who's certainly guilty of doing this is my father, who he seems to feel that, like, without, uh, and I'm not commenting on any of this. I'm just repeating what he said. He seems to think without Barack Obama's uh, help, that Elon Musk would be nowhere, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and people like to bring in this partisan stuff with Elon Musk. I also think that, uh, you know, him being a little bit of a, a quote-unquote bad boy and smoking pot on Joe Rogan and stuff, I think he probably got a new legion of fans because of that, but he also has the detractors because of that. And um, you will remember back here, I think right here that I'm pointing at, I believe it was right here, is where... They said he said financing approved that they're going to take the company private or something like that, and we got this huge rip here. That was an amazing move. But I mean, look at this move on earnings, and this has been amazing too. And you heard people the first day with this rip up. Let's just go in, down to like the twenty day, maybe here or ten day. This first rip up, you heard people right in this area saying, "Oh, what a great short here! I'm definitely going to short it." in a lot of the chats and stuff. And I actually did step in here to, to a lot of people and say, look, you don't know Tesla. This thing is a freaking monster. I would think twice before you shorted it here. And indeed, the thing just ripped. And probably a lot of the reason it ripped right here is just because so many people trying to short it and then, oh, 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 I made a mistake. I could chase it back up. That This looks very squeezy here. And, and you know, the activity after of it slowly melting lower, it feels very squeezy right there, right? You see that? Um, so be careful with this one. Okay, B-U-I-N-D. I managed to get myself a little clipped here. Um, I tried to pick a little bit of a bottom here earlier in the week, and I did sell some uh, right in this area here on, what was that, Tuesday? I did sell some of the 85 and 82 puts right here. And... Uh, it started to break down. I just bought them back in for a loss. You know, I lost, I don't know, 200 bucks or something like that and gave up. And I was like, oops, 
serves me right for trying to just jump in on a stock and take a directional play because, you know, I know I'm the worst person in the world at making directional plays on stocks. But, yeah, I tried to jump in here, couldn't take the heat. And then, the, of course, the next day it was back up above 85, almost to 90 again. I was like, oh, if I could just hang on. But sure enough, back lower again after a couple of days. Now, this is the move down, and it'll be interesting to see. Beyond Meat was seen as one of the best IPOs of this year, and it'll be interesting to see if this actually can make it all the way back down to like 45 again where it opened on the IPO. That would be really, really amazing if it did get there. But even as it is now, really, um, I remember sweating up here being shorted around the 180 area, and look, you could have just stayed short the whole way down. Amazing. And every, you know, I knew like in my heart up here that this was ridiculous pricing for this thing. And we talked about it a little bit. I remember. And I did make some money on this. But, geez, I mean, look at that. Just continue move down. It, it reminds you of the Tilray. Let's look at Tilray. Uh, was it, this was a similar story, but for the year before of the, the IPO. The rip, remember this one? I know Andros remember. I know Dro remember this one because Dro made a million bucks on this rip. But rip, my buddy was long it up here or in, in this area. He he'd been long it the whole time, and I was like, dude, just bail out, man. I think you should just bail out. Uh, but you know, or in this area, boom, just grind lower, grind lower. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. All right, uh, another one. Once again, that I've been following, and um, this thing might make it through. I don't know. We'll have to see. But Malincrot, uh, you know, get down to just grinding lower. I tried to buy some at different spots and just went against me, and I gave up finally a few months ago. But, you know, it gets down to 143. Several people did uh, scoop this one here. Even before then, let's go to like a, f I guess 180 days. All right, so people were scooping it here and turned out to be a good scoop. You know, I was trying to scoop it here or something, but people scooped it here, tended out to be a good scoop. It has kind of, it might survive, we don't know. Uh, this is one of these opioid, uh, opioid stocks that, uh, you know, was involved in all the litigation to do with the, you know, the uh, with Sackler family and all of that Purdue Pharma stuff. These guys were caught up in that whole thing too, marketing opioids, and you know, we're gonna we're gonna blame the the drug companies for people's addiction. Uh, and you know, they might have had a role. They certainly had a role in it, but. Uh, Coming from an addiction background myself, I need to take my own responsibility, and people need to take their own responsibility for their addictions. They want the f people want the freedom to be able to use drugs and not be arrested for it, but then when it comes to getting hurt by drugs, they want the government to step in and go after the companies. You can't have it both ways. Either, either the company, either the government makes strict drug laws and you get arrested if you use drugs and you go to jail, and they go after the companies, or they have looser drug laws, but you don't go after the companies. You take your own responsibility for things. You have to, you have to have, you, you can't have it both ways. You can't say, well, if it's against me, then I want the government to step in and go get people. But, uh, I'm sorry. But if it's, you know, if the government's going after me, I don't want government intervention. But if the government's going after the pharma companies, I do want government intervention. I don't think you can have it both ways. I think you need either need to say, okay, drugs are legalized, but it's my responsibility if I screw up with drugs, not the companies, or drugs are illegal, and then if I get caught with drugs, I'm busted, but also we can go after the companies to some extent for their role in things. Anyways, there's a little politics in there. <laughs> um, I know that those are two extremes, and there's a balance in between somewhere, of course. All right. Um, other ones, Candy and Neo. Okay. These are two Chinese electric car companies. Uh, Candy really has done nothing in like a l over a long period of time, whereas Neo has pretty much crashed. Um, I did trade Candy for a little while, like over a year ago. It was around, I think, six dollars. I, I, I started trading it right around here, and I let me get out of the way here. And I wasn't, 
I didn't get ground up on the short here, but I, I was trading it right around here, and then I was following it, following it, and I think I pretty much broke even on this one, but... Uh, Okay, ACB, ACB earnings, I believe, on the 11th. I am long this one here. I am looking for some sort of recovery in the MJ industry. It's been a long, long road. Here is the MJ ETF, known as MJ, uh, most composed of, I think it's like just under 10% of this is ACB. But anyways, ACB coming into earnings. We have to decide if I'm going to stay long into earnings. But looking for some sort of recovery in this industry at some point. CGC looks bad all of these just look kind of bad not good um but we'll see i mean there has to be some recovery at some point right because it is an industry they are making products just hasn't been going well all right so there's a little weekend update for you please be careful with the short vol trade if you're making money that's wonderful that's awesome but please do be careful and i will see you in the next one um love the uh the true crime youtube channels check them out uh true crime loser hilarious channel um uh, thanks for watching please follow me on twitter i heard that i was mentioned on volatility views for some of my tweets last week i've been very active with vix type tweets my twitter account is um the famous day famous spelled wrong let me pull it up just for a second here uh, it's not even, I don't even think that works. No, it doesn't even work from here. But it is uh, the Famous Dave, Famous Dave, uh, let me get out of the way. You can see it right there behind me. That's stock twits, but similar on Twitter. David Lincoln. Anyways, follow me on Stock Twits at Famous Dave, and the at I believe it's the Famous Dave on Twitter. Here we go, David Lincoln on Twitter. Please follow me. I want to get more followers. Um, I am very active. I put up tons of neat stuff that's not just about the market, but other stuff too. Have a lot of fun back and forth. I will respond to you if you uh, if you reach out to me there, and I'd love to hear from all of you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Have a great rest of your weekend.